It's it's hard to avoid the uh, baseball metaphor here. We have in the cleanup position. <laughs> <laughs> um, no pressure, Vaughn. Like. You can say whatever you need to say. Um, so we are really thrilled um, to have Vaughn Allen Goodwin here with us, um, replacing um, Reverend Campbell, who was unable to be here. But I think we are really going to benefit a lot from the wisdom, the science that Vaughn is going to drop on us here. Um, who is here as a member of SEIU um, and also as an organizer with the Poor People's Campaign. So covering a lot of bases and one compact person here. Thank you so much, Vaughn. I have to start by acknowledging the ground on which we stand. Three nations of people, the Ponca Poag, the Massachusetts and the Wampanoag. These are three nations of people and we cannot forget them. We are here and for many of them, they are not here. Mm -hmm. And it was because of the treaties that were broken. Mm -hmm. Some of them, as we know, had the had to march off to Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And today, right on our television, we see things similarly happening. Dr. King once said, there comes a time when silence could be betrayal. Mm -hmm. So we gotta ask ourselves, what type of a movement are we a part of? What type of movement do we call this? Just a little bit about myself. At the age of 16, I was recruited by the late Michael Harrington, mm -hmm. who wrote the book, The Other America which was read by Lyndon Banks Johnson and by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who delivered a speech called The Other America, which led Lyndon Banks Johnson to what he called the war on poverty. Mm -hmm. And what led Dr. King to start something called the Poor People's Campaign along with A. Philip Randolph and Baynard Rustin. Mm -hmm. And as a Morehouse man, in another house, it is in their honor and of those before us that I stand here today. Their spirits are here with me. The question is, what challenges do we face? The biggest challenge that I often find is this. Are we in this for the purpose of simply trying to obtain a degree or are we trying to change the system? What does it profit for a person to gain it the whole world and lose their soul? That is the, 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 the true question that we have to ask ourselves. So what I do is I, repre I, I work with PCA's personal care attendants mm -hmm. here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts uh, I was sent here by 1190, by SEIU International uh, back in uh, uh, 19, well, 2000, it's been so many years that I've been involved, uh, back in 2007 to help to organize PCA's 
-hmm. Back then we had about 2,000, today we have over 55,000. Back then the PCAs only made about uh, $9 an hour. Today they're on a pathway to $25 an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we have in our contract now racial justice mm -hmm. at the center of it. Uh, and uh, SEIU officially has proclaimed themselves as an anti-racist union. Uh, and, and, and racist, fighting racism is, is at the center of everything that we do. And let me say that our involvement with the Poor People's Campaign is nothing new. Yeah. Gotta put that out there. Yeah. When Dr. King back in 1968 mm -hmm. launched the Poor People's Campaign, mm -hmm. he called on Leon Davis, mm -hmm. who was the president of 1199 back then. Mm -hmm. And we sent a train going directly from New York into Penn Station in, New in Washington, D.C. In fact, some of us here went to, to the 60th anniversary on a, of the March on Washington this year mm -hmm. to, to, to celebrate. So what we are doing is not new. Our intersectionality is reality. Mm -hmm. We got to let that be known. And for all of us, it has to be known. It has to be real. And we have to be audacious enough to push it across. And we cannot be silent anymore. <laughs> we got to be audacious enough to call it what it is and call it out in ourselves. Because we cannot conquer the forces beyond us if we can't conquer the bigotry and hatred within us. There you go. So as we graduate, as we organize, as we sit in our positions of power and empower workers, I, think if you can. I challenge you to be audacious. I challenge you To be like Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who said a man who's not willing to die for something is not fit to live. I, some people might say, I, I, I don't know about that. Mm. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. In our time today, we need a labor movement that is audacious. Mm -hmm. They are audacious. Why can't we be audacious? That's mm -hmm. right. They are organized. Why can't we be organized? Mm -hmm. They are telling us what they are going to do. When are we going to stand up to them and tell them what we are going to do? Mm -hmm. They are letting you know where they stand. 45. Mm. We hope he's not 47. <laughs> Hell no. He's telling you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what are we telling him?